So for the last uh, presentation of this session, uh, I will uh, invite Lionel Tautzik to, to come and present on behalf of uh, Volker Anspeyer. Lionel will present the special condition on small VTOL that the agency published during the summer. And for those of you who are not familiar with the subject, it will give you an overview of what the agency has done on the subject. And then you can decide if you stay in this room this afternoon or if you go in the next room and have uh, an afternoon dedicated to the VTOL special condition and AMCs. Uh, good afternoon, my name is uh, Lionel Tozig. I'm a project certification manager in the VTOL department. And uh, Mr. Ansmeyer is the manager of the section on uh, eVTOL and new concepts. This uh, presentation uh, aims at uh, giving you an idea of um, a few details on the special condition, its applicability, what uh, the objectives associated are, how it's set up, also cover um, quickly uh, the different categories that we have introduced, basic and enhanced, and uh, you will have also some information on the novelties that have been introduced with a special condition, as well as uh, where we stand uh, with respect uh, to progress in this area. We have had a couple of uh, meetings uh, during the year to keep uh, the community uh, informed. So people that have been uh, following this topic uh, will know most of the material in there but the presentation is intended as a teaser to invite you uh, to intend uh, the VTOL session uh, for the rest of uh, the symposium. Applicability of the special condition, this is a strong request that uh, we received uh, following the publication of uh, the proposed special condition to identify a clear criteria to distinguish between a traditional rotorcraft and uh, the aircrafts that will be covered by the special condition. And uh, for us, the key um, aspect is the distributed propulsion. So the criteria that we have uh, clarified in the final special condition is that um, for an aircraft to be covered by this special condition, you need to have more than uh, two lift thrust units uh, used in the vertical aspect. To illustrate uh, what it looks like on a number of products, um, here are products that will uh, be considered as uh, conventional uh, rotorcrafts, while uh, this type of architecture uh, could fall under the special condition VTOL. Um, we have, uh, as you know, uh, many uh, new type of architectures uh, being proposed, um, also new technologies. And uh, what we kept in mind when developing the special condition is that we will also have new type of operations. Uh, to give you an example, uh, this is a picture of the ESA headquarters uh, on the left uh, along the river, next uh, to the main train station. And our hotel where we are right now is located uh, in the upper right corner. So we could uh, imagine a shuttle service uh, between the main station and the hotel. And uh, you can uh, see that um, the possibility for an emergency landing are uh, very reduced in this type of environment. So this corresponds to what uh, we refer to as a congested environment and uh, that we have used uh, throughout the special condition. It's a term that already exists uh, for the OPS aspects that uh, we just uh, reused. Um, the objective of the special condition was uh, to provide a certification basis for different type of aircraft, regardless of the um, type of um, architecture or the technology on board. We wanted to have a level playing field between uh, all those aircraft while ensuring an adequate uh, level of safety, uh, especially um, for the passenger and the third parties. Um, the third parties uh, being uh, especially important in the congested environments. Um, we wanted also to take advantage to this uh, key parameter that I mentioned, the distributed propulsion, because it gives us an opportunity um, to um, use this uh, redundancy to increase the safety objectives. So we decided uh, to uh, provide a standalone special condition. However, we have incorporated uh, elements of uh, the certification specification CS27 for small rotorcrafts, as well as CS23 for normal category airplanes. 
And it was decided uh, to keep, uh, for now, the special condition focused on a small VTOL. And uh, for the definition of uh, small, we kept uh, the small rotorcraft limits, so up to nine passenger, and uh, maximum takeoff mass of uh, 3,175 3, kilos. It will be a special class of aircraft um, as um, handled uh, through um, the operation, and we'll discuss a little bit more about this. The um, special condition is composed of uh, high-level objectives that are then uh, compl complemented by accepted uh, means of compliance. Um, the structure is similar to the latest amendment of uh, CS23, Amendment 5, where we set objectives and then we complement with AMC. Uh, we intend to supplement this uh, special condition um, to address uh, aspects that are not in there today, uh, such as uh, remote piloting or autonomy. Uh, you have seen uh, in the presentation from uh, David Solar that uh, the development uh, took uh, 15 months and uh, we are working right now on VMC. The construction of uh, VSC VTOL is, uh, of course, uh, centered around the VTOL safety, and uh, we have introduced a number of uh, concepts and uh, elements um, around this VTOL safety. I just mentioned that for now we are focusing on a small uh, VTOL. We have uh, also defined uh, numerical objectives, uh, design assurance levels, and here you see a few more elements that have been introduced in the special condition. And um, the construction had to be uh, carefully evaluated because each aspect contributes uh, to the vital safety, uh, but you also have aspects that uh, influence each other. This is only the one uh, layer. Um, here we have uh, built the initial airworthiness around vital safety. However, we have provided only high-level objectives. So behind these objectives, we are developing what I was mentioning, uh, AMC, accepted means of compliance. Uh, but this is only one aspect that will address, uh, that will uh, affect the final uh, level of safety of vital operations. Around this, uh, we are developing our OPS and uh, licensing uh, regulations. We have also uh, considerations to take on uh, maintenance, on air traffic management. And uh, we need to ensure that uh, all um, those aspects um, affecting vital safety uh, mesh well together and that are aligned uh, to obtain the, the final results. We have also introduced uh, categories, um, and the novelty is that uh, we linked those categories to the type of operation uh, being conducted. The first category, uh, referred to as category basic, is reserved uh, outside of uh, congested areas, so typically outside of the urban environment, and uh, either for um, private flights or for flights, uh, commercial flights, um, other than commercial air transport of passengers. So it would, could be a transport of uh, cargo, for example, or the um, operations that are foreseen on the SPO today for rotorcraft. We have an associated uh, performance requirement that uh, if you have um, a failure during the flight, you are able to perform uh, a controlled emergency landing. And for the second uh, category that we introduced, so associated with um, the congested uh, areas or with commercial air transport of passengers, if uh, you have a similar failure during the flight, then you need to have enough performance in your aircraft and to be able to either continue to your intended destination or to divert uh, to an alternate uh, vertiport. So associated with those uh, categories, we have defined uh, safety levels. For the category basic, we have uh, kept uh, the approach from CS23, where you have subcategories depending on the number of passengers on board. And we have actually lined up uh, the categories, except we have increased um, the safety level, uh, the safety objectives by one level uh, compared to CS23. Uh, due to the advanced uh, flight controls that are required uh, when you have uh, distributed uh, propulsion. So this uh, 
higher complexity justifies for us to increase by one level the safety objectives. And I was mentioning that we have a performance objective of a controlled emergency landing for this category. For the category enhanced, it was uh, decided uh, to make the safety objective analog to a CS27 category A helicopter, uh, which corresponds to the numerical objectives of a CS23 level 4 aircraft. And uh, the performance objective is different as we request uh, continued safe flight and landing as uh, mentioned on the last slide. Uh, why do we insist on this uh, continued safe flight and landing? Um, this illustrates uh, the point. Uh, here we are located um, above the Grand Central Station in uh, Manhattan on top of the MetLife building, which used to be the Pan Am building, where there used to be a heliport before it was closed uh, following uh, a bad accident. So this is the view that a pilot uh, starting from this uh, vertiport uh, potentially would have uh, looking downtown. Uh, for example, if you have a shuttle service to uh, Wall Street, uh, this is the view that the pilot would have. And the continued safe flight and landing is requested that uh, appropriate landing sites are identified in advance for this type of operation. We don't want the pilot to have to make the call at the last minute to decide on which uh, rooftop is going to land. Some of our uh, novelties that have been introduced in the special condition, uh, we mandate um, at airworthiness level now uh, recorders. And we only ask for lightweight recorders as uh, uh, we have uh, recently introduced for some categories of uh, general aviation airplanes. Uh, for us, it makes sense. Uh, it's uh, one of the top 10 uh, NTSB recommendation. And uh, we are speaking of uh, uh, new aircraft designed from scratch with advanced flight controls. So we don't see it as an undue burden to include from the beginning some uh, lightweight uh, recorders, uh, given the safety benefits that uh, we will have in case of accidents. Bird strike uh, is also addressed, and uh, we have uh, made use of the work uh, from the um, ARAC um, Rotorcraft uh, Working Group. And uh, you will have a dedicated uh, presentation on this topic uh, tomorrow. I was uh, mentioning that uh, we wanted to take advantage of uh, the distributed uh, propulsion characteristics of uh, VTOL. Um, and we have associated uh, no single failure catastrophic criteria. Um, there again, we will have a dedicated session to provide you more details on what uh, we intend. Also on the crashworthiness uh, concepts, um, you will have a presentation uh, covering uh, the equivalent that we foresee for the fuel resistant uh, uh, crashworthiness that was uh, just uh, mentioned in the Bell presentation. Um, so you will have the details uh, tomorrow as well. And we have also foreseen that for uh, some uh, limited cases, uh, we intend to allow some damage on the aircraft. Uh, this is a novelty compared to rotorcraft, where we actually request to demonstrate um, auto rotation around the HV curve. There, uh, we would like to allow some uh, limited damage as long as the um, occupant is protected, uh, but we see that um, some technology could uh, bring some advantage there. Um, throughout the year, we have been uh, in contact uh, with uh, multiple authorities around the world to discuss uh, this uh, special condition. You heard also that uh, we have started a rulemaking task to address the related aspects of OPS, uh, flight crew licensing, air traffic management, and there we, we will make use of the work uh, being performed right now on the use space uh, for Europe. Um, you will hear more this afternoon or so on the EUROK working group that has been started to allow uh, interested stakeholders to participate in the development of AMC. And um, just uh, mentioning that uh, for now we are referring to accepted means of compliance because since uh, uh, we have a special condition, the means of compliance will be accepted uh, for each uh, project. And um, 
we have plans in the future to develop a certification specification, which then will have acceptable means of compliance. That's the subtlety there. So that's, um, you will have a number of them uh, presented uh, during the rest of the symposium. And we also intend to publish uh, this AMC for um, public consultation. Uh, it will also give a chance to you, to the general public, uh, to provide some feedback. Um, we will uh, publish it on the same page uh, where we have uh, located uh, the special condition and you have the possibility on our website uh, to subscribe uh, via an RSS feed so that uh, you are kept uh, up to date when uh, this page uh, is changed. So I hope uh, um, it gave you some interest uh, to attend uh, the VTOL sessions that will develop all this. And uh, this concludes the presentation, and I leave the floor for the Q&A session. Thank you.